everything will be smooth at, at our research congress. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the name the kingdom come, they will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. Saint Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. Saint Dominic de Guzman, pray for us. And if the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much, Charles. Let's move on to the next part of our program, which is the national anthem. Let me just play the video. Mga kababayan ng pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Sayang magiliw, pero sa silatanan, alam ng puso sa titipo'y buhay. Upang hinihirang, huyag ka ng magiging, sa manulupin, di ka pasisipin, sa nagatang tutok sa simulat, sa langit mong pagraw, ay hinagang tulak, awit sa pagkaya minamahal. Okay po. Sorry po about that one. Okay, let me... Oh. Ah, Nag-loading na naman po tayo. Pasensya na. This is a little, ano, with our internet connection. Anyway, for this afternoon po, um, we were supposed to hear a welcome address from Sir Nick. May we have him if he's around? If not, I'd like to request Sir Akain to um, express his welcome address for this group na lang po. Sir Akain? Umabati po si, Ms. si Dr. Ria. I think he's muted. Anyway po, uh, for this afternoon, I'm pretty sure that you guys are all excited. And um, with this one, we are going to have the... Um, the researches of our students for... Uh, for this Congress, okay. All right, let me just um, open the drive. It was sent just right now. I hope you're able to see it po. Oh! May I request the uh, viewers also to keep their mics on mute while we are having the program. Okay, but let me just display the welcome address of Sir Nick. For everyone. I hope you guys can see it po. Sensya na medyo mahangin dito sa aking area. Yeah. There you go. Can you see the presentation po? Or the video of Sir Nick? It's um, displaying a little slowly but uh, We'll get through this. 
I am in a different location right now as there is an event happening outside our um, house. And so, okay, let me play now. There you go. Good morning, dear administrators, faculty, parents, students, and our distinguished panelists. Welcome to the Aquinas School Academic Performance Exhibit or APEX and our Research Congress for the school year 2022. Now, Aquinas School believes that students should be imbued with the necessary skills for the 21st century. And one of these skills is research-based. Our students have prepared various exhibits and research materials for their presentation. Now, in order for the school to gauge these various performance tasks and research papers, we have invited a panel of educational advocates to analyze and scrutinize their work. It is our hope that these students hone these research skills for the betterment of our country and as well as the world. So, good morning and enjoy today's academic affair. There you go. Let's move on to uh, the next part of our program. That should be the presentation of our rubric. So please allow me to um, present to you guys the presentation of our um, rubrics, although this has been already discussed with the students, but to generalize everything that just open for. I hope that you guys are able to have your um, lunch and have enjoyed it as usual. Let's begin with the research congress rubrics on the research paper. Let me just display. For the research paper, these are the essentials that are needed um, to be seen by our panelists, especially the title page, which should contain the group member's name, strand, date, neatly finished with no errors. It should be in all caps centered and have used Times New Roman font style. For the abstract, it is presented in a clear and concise statement in a single engaging thought-provoking sentence with the purpose of the paper, wherein they would find at least 150 to 250 words. For the introduction, I hope you guys can see the presentation as I am reading. For the introduction, the paper has an engaging introduction that clearly states the main topic and gives an overview of the structure of the paper. For the body, each paragraph contains sufficient supporting sentences that develop the main idea, and it should be double-spaced. For structural development of idea, the researchers demonstrate logical sequencing of ideas through well-developed paragraphs. For conclusion, the conclusion is engaging and restates the thesis. For the mechanics, no errors in punctuations, capitalization, and spelling are found in the paper. For the usage, no errors in sentence structure and word usage are encountered. For citation, all cited works, both text and visual, are written in the correct APA 7th edition format. For the appearance, the paper has a neatly and organized cover. And lastly, for the contents, all required information are presented clearly and accurately, of which all these uh, rubrics parts shall be scored from, from 1 to 5, 5 being the highest, 1 being the lowest. For the oral presentation, it is expected and their language and use of delivery, the presenter effectively establishes eye contact. Again, next, the presenter speaks clearly effectively and confidently. The next would be the presenter fully engages the audience. The presenter is dressed properly. The presenter uses appropriate word choice and has a good grammar. For organization and preparation, the presenter introduces the topic clearly and creatively. The presenter maintains clear focus on the topic. 
The presenter effectively includes smooth transitions to connect key points. And lastly, the presenter ends with logical, effective, and relevant conclusions. For the content, the presenter clearly defines the topic of thesis and its significance. The presenter supports the thesis and key findings with an analysis of relevant and accurate evidence. And lastly, the presenter combines and evaluates existing ideas to form new insights. For question and answer, the presenter demonstrates extensive knowledge of the topic by responding confidently, precisely, and appropriately to all questions and feedback. Again, the points for these uh, criteria are given one to five as a grade, one being the lowest, five being the highest. And lastly, the research presentation, which contains the PowerPoint, the presentation of research, visual presentation, documentation and quality of sources, and lastly, spelling and grammar. For presentation of, of research, the presentation prominently positions the title and the author of the paper. The main points of the introduction, the research methods, the results, the conclusions are thoroughly and concisely presented in an organized manner. And lastly, for that part, the delivery of the presentation is engaging and the questions are answered properly. For visual presentation, the presentation is visually appealing. It is not cluttered and the colors and patterns used enhance readability. The fonts used are readable. The graphics such as tables and figures are engaging and, en and enhances the text. Lastly, the contents are clearly arranged in such a way that the audience understand what is shown without any narration. For documentation and quality of sources, all data from different sources are cited properly and the sources are cited correctly using APA 7th edition citation style. Lastly, for spelling and grammar, no spelling and grammar mistakes are spotted. Those are the rubrics to be utilized today for the research presentation. Specifically for this afternoon are for the oral presentation and research presentation PowerPoint. May I request again the participants especially to please open their cams while the Congress is ongoing. Okay, so um, do you have any clarifications for the um, rubrics for this afternoon? Okay, but if not, we shall continue with um, the presentation of our beautiful panelists. And we have with us this afternoon, Dr. Ria Liza Centeno Canlas. Good afternoon, ma'am, and welcome po in our research um, Congress. There you go. Let me just introduce Dr. Let me just introduce Dr. Lisa Centeno Canlas. Allow me to read uh, this um, presentation. Po. It, there were a few changes, but uh, please listen carefully as I introduce to you guys our um, panel for this afternoon. Dr. Ria Lisa C. Canlas is a registered civil engineer accredited materials engineer one and the certified certified patent agent she obtained her degrees in bachelor of science in civil engineering at the mapua institute of technology master of engineering management major in construction management at the pamantasan ng lungsod ng maynila and doctor of technology at the technical technological university of the philippines Currently taking Innovation and Creative Entrepreneurship or ICE Management Diploma at Thames International. She is an industry practitioner, academ academician, researcher, innovator, inventor, technologist, scientist, entrepreneur, patent professional, and science communicator. She is a member of various professional and civic groups such as Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers, or PICE. Committee Vice Chair of Association of Patent Professionals, Vice President of Researchers, Inventors, Scientists, and Engineers of the Philippines, or RISE. Member of American Concrete Insti Institute Philippines, or ACIP. Member of Filipino Inventors Federation, or FilinFed. Board of Director of the Mapua CENSE Alumni Association, 
Auditor of Philippine Association of University Women, or PAUW, and Founder President of FENIT Element Institute of the Philippines, or known as FEIP. She has an extensive training under the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines and passed several distance learning and advanced courses at the World Intellectual Property Organization, or WIPO, based on Geneva based in Geneva, Switzerland. She served as patent consultant of the Intellectual Property Office of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Lyceum of the Philippines University, and University of Rizal System. Dr. Ria is a founder, inventor of Pole Light Technology, Inc., a startup local manufacturer that uses green innovation and technology to contribute to nation building. The technology is seeded by the Department of Science and Technology to help usher in an active localization of construction materials and respond to the infrastructure needs of the country. Through her innovative construction materials, Dr. Ria was conferred with back-to-back -back national awards. In 2019, she was given the Gold Award, the highest rated design in the field of materials innovation, and the Grand Prize Malasakit Award as the first recipient in the Philippines for her technology and designs embodying the highest ideals, having the most impact in addressing 10 Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs of the United Nations, given during the first Good Design Award 2019 of the Design Center Philippines, or DCP, and the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI. In 2020, the grand winner in the professional category of the Alfredo M. Yao Intellectual Property Award given by the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines and the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The AMY IP Awards aim to recognize socially relevant inventions by Filipinos to be eligible for the award. The IP must be a patented and patentable technology product, service, or subject matter. It is also um, have Sorry, she also have the commercial potential. It also has the com commercial potential. Will solve a societal problem or contribute to local community development, and is environmentally sound and sustainable. In 2021, second prize and second best video in the original invention contest and exhibits in the national capital region under the Likha Award for outstanding government funded creative research 2021 of Technology, Application, and Promotion Institute, or TAPI, in the Department of Science and Technology, DOS, or DOST. Also, an outstanding Valis Award, Annual Oval Award in National University, Core Value of Innovation 2021, and Most Outstanding Alumni in the Field of Research and Development confirmed by the Mapua CENC Alumni Association. Dr. Ria has published several research projects and involved as project leader to several grant in aid research projects funded by the Commission on Higher Education and Department of Science and Technology. She is currently working on CHED funded research titled, titled Big Data Analytics and Mapping of Emerging Industry Landscape in the ASEAN Implications to Higher Education multi-institutional collaboration with various higher education institutions in the Philippines and in nine other member countries of the ASEAN economic cooperation, such as Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, Brunei, Singapore, Malaysia, Laos, Cambodia, and Myanmar from October 2021 to present. A project leader funded by the DOSD with the title Optimization of an industry-grade prototype of Polite products, which is ongoing. A project leader funded by National University, COVID prevention products ongoing. Project leader of multinational and multi-institutional research cooperation with Institute Technology Harapan Bangsa Bandung, Indonesia on precision agriculture. A project leader of multinational and multi institutional research cooperation with Thai Nichi Institute of Technology, Bangkok, Thailand, on corporate social responsibility. 
a project leader funded by CHED, determinants of best practices on practicum programs on selected higher institutions in the Philippines. A project leader funded by CHED, outcomes of business social responsibility programs of the top five semiconductor com companies in the Philippines. An assistant project leader funded by DOSD, a study of technological management practices of multi-stakeholders in Estero de Paco. Assistant project leader of development of mobile and web applications of an integrated commuter information on the connectivity of Metro Manila train system or iCommute. A project leader funded by the Lyceum in the Philippines University Research Program on Research for a Sustainable Urban Renewed Environment or Reassure. A project leader funded by the Lyceum of the Philippines University, Beauty Line Finished Ingredients Specialty Products and Packaging. She also conducted intellectual property audits on students' thesis in various universities in the Philippines and to include various campuses of the Philippines High School. Dr. Ria promotes the feminine genius as a female making impact in male-dominated industries such as construction, manufacturing, and creatives for an authentic cultural change where deep technology revolutionizes creative industry towards sustainable and inclusive development. She was featured in several media outfits as an ASEAN Malasaki designer and a woman in science, recently featured at CNN Philippines Earth Hour as an entrepreneur promoting eco-friendly construction through innovative materials. Currently, the director of the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship of National University Philippines, let us all welcome Dr. Ria Lisa C. Canlas. Everyone, please give her a virtual clap. We're going to have a very, very good panelist for this afternoon. Doc Ria, would you like to say something? Yes. Um, hello, um, um, Susie and the rest of the students. I saw your, your work, the three teams, very impressive. And um, I'm here to further improve, enhance your work, give you more direction. And um, uh, as I am so glad that uh, Aquinas School has this kind of initiative. No? Maybe you are way far ahead from other universities in this kind of a research forum. So congratulations. Dun palang winner na kayo. No? So um, keep it up, guys. And I hope that everybody would uh, be having their inspiration in research kasi guys sa research uh mababago yung buhay niyo <laughs> ang kita niyo yung introduction ko kanina ng haba no it's all 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 because of research thank you Ayan. thank you very much and we are very very much impressed uh, i'm sure medyo kabado but excited ang ating mga research presenters for this afternoon so let me continue with the display of our uh, presentation. All right, there you go. Later on, guys, I'll give you a copy of her, ano, of her profile so that you will be much, much inspired. Pa. Okay, so let me introduce to you our researchers for this afternoon. The first group are Sebastian Alex Alviar, Gregory De Davis Kamongol, Liam Iver Isaac O'Toole, and Zirari Basa with a research titled A Comparative Study on Exclusive and Co-ed Academic Environment of Grade 12 Senior High School Students, Aquinas School, and Dominican College, San Juan. Second presenter, David Matthew Adrias with the research title, A Phenomenal Study of Students Conducting Home-Based Science Experiments. The third group, um, Afable Charles Andre, Evangelista Alejandre, Nobela Jose Andrew, Tudoso Har and Tudoso Harold Agen, with the research title Enhancing the Academic Performance of Senior High School Students in English Subjects Through Video Games Activities. Well, the last group for this one, um, they are moved to another group so that we can utilize the time properly as the presenters are given with a new um, 
timeline wherein they can present at least 20 to 30 minutes for the PowerPoint presentation and given um, an hour to be able to have both the presentation and the question and answer portion. So if you guys are ready, we shall have the presentation accordingly as this will be the start of the presentation of our researchers. Let's all welcome and begin with our first group. That would be Sebastian Alex Alviar, Gregory Davis Kamongol, Liam Ivor Isaac O'Toole, and Jeraili Basa. I'll stop share that you can um, share your presentation. Again, may I request all the participants to please keep their cams on as the presentation is going on. Hello? Hello? Am I heard now? <clears throat> so, good afternoon to everyone present in this conference today. Good afternoon to our dear members of the faculty and admin, to my hardworking teacher, Ms. Susie Alabado, to our special panelist, Dr. Ria Canlas, to my partners in this research, and of course, to the handsome and beautiful faces of our audience within our school and outside. And here is the title of our research project, a comparative study on exclusive and co-ed academic environment of grade 12 senior high school students in Aquinas School and Dominican College and one. So here are the names of the researchers, Mr. Sebastian Alex Alviar, Mr. Zeraili Basa, Mr. Gregory Davis Camongol, and Mr. Liam Ivor Isaac O'Toole Me. We are all from the same grade level, grade 12, and we are all from the same strand, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So for our introduction, in the Philippines, schools mostly have a co-educational environment from public schools to private schools. The Philippines is a Catholic country that upholds a lot of beliefs and sayings. We all know that. <clears throat> this causes a change in the environment schools are impl implementing. Some schools, such as exclusive schools, have an environment where boys and girls do not interact with one another. And some schools, such as the international ones, have a co-ed environment where boys and girls are free to interact with one another. The research aims to compare classes with an ex exclusive environment and a co-ed environment. So for our background of the study, <clears throat> Aquinas School and Dominican College are two well-known schools in San Juan City, Metro Manila. It was about two years ago that the school started distance learning due to the onset effect of the COVID-19 virus. The two types of learning that were implemented in the whole of the Philippines was modular learning and online learning. Modular learning is where students are given activities on which they can take home and answer. Online learning, such as the ones me and my fellow researchers are in, and as our classmates too, are the ones where we attend online classes where we join a conference such as this one. So Aquinas School offers exclusive education to boys, while Dominican College offers education exclusively to girls. So due to the COVID-19 pandemic, last year, the schools decided to merge the senior high students of both Aquinas and Dominican College and one. We were curious to see how the change in the environments would impact and affect the performance of the students. So for our statement of the problem, we thought of three questions that would be 
the questions we would like to answer by the end of this research. So for our first question, how will the transition from an exclusive to an uncoded environment affect the performance of male and female students? So we all know that in life, change is necessary and change sometimes happens accidentally, whether we foresee it coming or, and sometimes it happens inevitably where we do know that it's gonna happen. So education is very important, especially the environment for a young child. And so as we go to our second question, we would like to know what are the possible differences in the academic and social performance of students that are studying and working in two different environments. So since they are different, we would like to know if there is going to be any changes in their performances. And as for the last question, which kind of environment do students prefer between exclusive and co-ed? We all know that education is important since it is part of the things that mold and shape a student or a young child as they grow up and to be the person they am. We would like to know what they prefer and what in, which environment is going to help them the most between exclusive and co-ed. So good morning, everyone. For our hypothesis, there will be no difference in the performance of students whether they are in an exclusive and co-ed environment. There will be no significant effect on the transition from exclusive to co-ed co setup. The students will not have any preference on the environment they are in. And for our scope and limitations, the research focus on the effect of merging students studying in Aquina School or Rakhines <clears throat> with those studying at Dominican College or Dominicans into a co-ed setup. The research will determine the factors that influence their performance as well as the outcomes of the new environment. Respondents will include students who formerly attended an exclusive school what are currently involved in a co-ed institution. The total number of responses in opinion for the Dominican College will be limited to 40. So here are our review of related data report or RRL. On the left side, it is all about exclusive setup. Students at exclusive schools had higher educational goals, more confidence in their abilities, and a more positive attitude toward academics than students in co-ed high schools. While on the right side, it is all about in co-education. It allows the students to learn about each other in a natural and realistic environment. They will also learn to respect both gender because of diversity, and it can also serve as an excellent preparation for their assimilation into, into the greater community. I think, um, Sebastian, you're muted. Um, sorry, I think it was. Basa it is supposed to be Mr. Basa. It's supposed to be Mr. Basa. Go ahead and continue, na palia. So, for our materials and methods, in the our research design, the researchers conducted the, the research using a survey research design, which is described as a method of doing research utilizing surveys. The researchers also ut utilized a chi-square test to find out the significant relationship between co-ed and exclusive setups in order to determine if there is a difference. So for the creation of the survey, um, the researchers created surveys through Google Forms. Um, Google Forms is one of the easiest 
ways to create a survey nowadays because you can easily edit it and you can easily send it to your respondents. And you don't have to you don't have to go out of your house and be exposed to the dangers of COVID-19. All you really need to do, all you really need to have is a internet and a means of send and responses to whom you can send it to. For our sampling procedure, this study made use of the stratified sampling technique. The, av the advantage of stratified random sampling is that it captures key population characteristics in the sample. Researchers wanted, the researchers wanted to obtain a sample population that best represents the schools by subdividing them into subgroups. It seems that Mr. Zirayali Basa now has come back to our conference and I'll be passing the mic on to him. Hello, sorry for the uh, technical problems. All right, to continue what Liam has said, our research design is the survey research design, which involves using surveys like in our data gathering instrument, which are the survey questionnaires. Uh, we also use the chi-square test to find out if there is a difference between the co-ed and exclusive setups by finding out the significant relationship through the chi-square. For our materials and methods, the sampling procedure used was the stratified sampling technique, and we used that to obtain a sample population that best represents the schools by subdividing them into subgroups. So we chose a limit of 40 respondents from the participating schools. And the formula was the total sample size divided by the entire population multiplied by the population of subgroups. So with a total population size of 88, 52 Dominican college students and 36 Aquinian students, we needed 40 respondents. <clears throat> so with the formula, 16 Dominican students and 14 Aquinian students were chosen for a total of 40 respondents. For our results, stud 18 or 45% of students agreed that it is easy to participate and recite in an exclusive setting, while 15 or 37.5% felt neutral in co ed setting. Out of 40, 40 responses, 12 or 30% strongly agreed, 18 or 45% agreed, 7 or 17.5% that is easy to participate to an exclusive environment, while 3 or 7.5% disagree. While out of 40 respondents, 2 or 5% strongly agreed, 13 or 32.5% agreed, 15 or 37.5% responded neutrally that it was easy to participate and recite in a co-educational setting, while 8 or 20% disagreed and 2 or 5% strongly disagreed. Next. Nineteen or forty seven point five students agreed that it is easy to communicate with their groups in an exclusive environment, while sixteen or forty percent students felt neutral in a co-ed setting. Out of forty responses, wait lang. Out of 40 responses, 12 or 30% strongly agreed, 19 or 47.5 agreed, while 9 or 22.5% were neutral, that is easy to communicate and work in groups or pair in an exclusive environment. While out of 40 responses, 3 or 7.5% strongly agreed, 10 or 25% agreed, 16 or 40% responded, Responded neutrally, while 9 or 22.5% disagreed and 2 or 5% strongly disagreed. That is easy to communicate and work in co educational setup. Next is 17 or 42.5% of students strongly agreed that it is easy to reach out their classmates in an exclusive environment, while 18 or 45% of students felt neutral in the co ed setting. Out of 40 responses, 17 or 42.5% strongly agreed, 13 or 32.5% agreed, 
9 or 22.5% were neutral, while 1 or 2.5% disagreed that it's easy to reach out with their classmates in an exclusive environment. While out of 40 responses, 2 or 5% strongly agreed, 13 or 25% agreed, 18 or 45% were neutral, that is easy to reach out with their classmates in a co-ed environment, while 6 or 15% disagreed, and 1 or 2.5% strongly disagreed. Next. Seventeen or forty two point five percent of students strongly agreed that they are comfortable in only having classmates of the same sex, while eighteen or forty five percent of students felt neutral in a co-ed setting. Out of forty responses, seventeen or forty two point five percent strongly agreed, nine or twenty two point five percent agreed, eight or 20% were neutral, while 5 or 12.5% disagreed, and 1 or 2.5% strongly disagreed that they are comfortable in only having classmates of the same sex. Out of 40 responses, 6 or 15% strongly agreed, 12 or 30% agreed, 18 or 45% were neutral, while 4 or 10% disagreed that they are comfortable in having of the opposite sex. Next. Nineteen or forty seven point five percent students agreed that they are receiving better grades in the exclusive environment, while sixteen or forty percent of students felt neutral in a core setting. Out of 40 responses, 10 or 25% strongly agreed, 19 or 47.5 agreed, while 11 or 27.5 were neutral that they are receiving better grades in an exclusive environment. While out of 40 responses, 8 or 20% strongly agreed, 12 or 30% agreed, 16 or 40% were neutral, while 2 or 5% disagreed, and 2 or 5% strongly disagreed. Next. Lastly is 16 or 40% of students strongly agreed that they are learning better in an exclusive environment, while 18 or 45% students felt neutral in the co-ed setting. Out of 40 responses, 16 or 40% strongly agreed, 14 or 35 percent agreed, 7, 7 or 17.55 were neutral, while 3 or 7.5 disagreed that is easy to learn, that find it easy to learn better in an exclusive environment. Out of 40 responses, 3 or 7.5 strongly agreed, 15 or 37.5 agreed, 18 were neutral while 3 or 7.5 disagreed. And 1 or 2.5% answered strongly disagree that it is easy to learn better in a co-ed setup. Next. All right, so shown here is the results for our last three questions. The first question is what they prefer most out of the two educational setups. So if you uh, look at the first, um, uh, first question, the majority, which is 15 out of 40 or 37.5%, preferred the co-educational setup. It is followed closely by 13 out of 40 respondents or 32.5% that preferred the exclusive setup, while uh, 12 or 30% were undecided. The second, uh, the second question, uh, the next question or the second one is their opinions on the current co-ed setup between Aquinas School and Dominican College. So the majority, which is 28 out of 40 
or 70% found the setup to be fair, while 9 responded, 22.5% that they liked the co-ed setup, uh, and, uh, while 3 or 7.5% uh, disliked the co-ed setup. The last question was if they had an easy transition from the exclusive setup to the co-ed setup. The majority, which is 19 out of 40, or 47.5%, answered that they had an easy transition, while 13, or 32.5%, responded that they had a hard time. And 8 answered 20%, uh, maybe. Next, please. All right. So shown here is the results for the chi-square test, where we calculated the x squared calculated using uh, calculations between the observed values table and the expected values table. The data for the tables were gathered from the first 12 questions in the survey. So the x squared tabular, on the other hand, was a given from the probability content table for chi-square using a significance level of 0.50. So we can see that the x squared calculated is greater than the x squared tabular. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis that there is a significant difference in the academic and social performance of the students. Next, please. Now that we have discussed and analyzed our data findings and results, so we have now reached our conclusion. So like what Mr. Zarayli Basa had said earlier, um, we reject the, we now reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative, which is that there is a significant change in an that the change in the environment impacted the academic performance of the students. And to answer another one of our problems earlier, the study determined that most of the students had an easy transition in their <clears throat> environments. Of the 40 respondents, 19, 19 or 47.5% said that the move from exclusive to co-ed was easy, 13 or 32.5% said it was difficult, and 8 or 20% said was not undecided because they answered maybe. So the students at Aquinas School and Dominican College prefer co-ed education over an exclusive environment. The majority of students support a co-educational setup, while 13 respondents prefer an exclusive setup. 12 respondents are still undecided based on our data and results. And so now we have reached our acknowledgements. This research was supported and reviewed by Mrs. Maria Suzette Alabado, our research professor. We thank her and we thank our respondents from Aquinas School and Dominican College in one who provided answers that became our data to analyze and interpret, interpret leading to the conclusion of this paper. We would also like to show our gratitude to the articles and related literature we have found, for they became the pillars that supported our research and through their information which had been utilized during the course of this research. We would also like to thank our panelist, Dr. Ria, for her insights later. We are also immensely grateful to the researchers that have worked hard in creating and reviewing each part of the research to ensure that it will be of use to the human civilization. Thank you very much, Group 1. Lastly, very, okay, last, lastly, we would like to thank uh, the members of the admin and faculty who are with us today to watch our presentation and also our handsome and beautiful students from Aquinas School and Dominican College. And now we are ready to answer any questions regarding our research. All right. Thank you very much, Group 1. Dr. Ria, the floor is yours to, um, for the question and answer portion. All right, so congratulations to the team for the presentation. Actually, tell you honestly, your topics are almost um, 
almost the same as the topics being done on the college level. No? In fact, there are also some faculty in the college level who are quite a doing a lot of this kind of research. Tawag dito comparative research. No? Okay, so um, may I know how long you did your research? Uh, hello, Miss. I'll be yes. the one to answer that. Um, we did this research for a total of two to three months because um, in our quarters, we divided the chapters. Uh, like for example, uh, for the first quarter, we focus on chapter chapters one to two, and then on the next quarter, we focus on chapter three to four. So um, in my estimate that we were able to study, review, and finalize this research in under three months. Um, the first few, the first two months was uh, uh, given for the study of the terms and the study of the research itself so that we would know if it is feasible and that it would be any it would be of any use to those who will be reading it or be utilizing it in the future. All right. Actually, um, when we say we do research, it, it includes from the time that uh, you are already doing your review of literature. Okay. Up to the time that you're already doing your survey plus to the time that you're do doing your analysis and then your conclusion. Okay. So that's uh, so in the curriculum, it's uh, how many you, you're semestral, tama ba? Semestral ba? Um, there, are, there are two semesters, and in each semester, there are four quarters each. So basically, it's like um, you're, you're just dividing it into two, and then you divided the semesters into four. All right. Okay. So practically one year from research methods. Um, or one, one term only. No, Miss. Uh, one semester. One only. semester only. All right. So that's a good um, accomplishment for, for one semester. Okay. So una yung um, the PowerPoint presentation is okay. You're not reading. <laughs> <laughs> Maganda yung ka-present, you only uh, highlight what is supposed to be highlighted. And the presentation is also okay. As I've said, it's not reading. All right. So now first, um, the, of course, the most important part of the, of the research is the objectives, or the statement of the problem. We call it SOP. No? In your SOP, um, I'm, I'm quite looking at how you use the question form, yung how, how what, no? So, siyempre, kailangan sumasabay tayo dun sa sagot ng kung how, how, kung what, what. No? Yun yung tignan natin para we could really sense kung there is a um, parallelism of the objectives to that of the, of the, um, the methods and then conclusion. So, magkaka-connect sila lahat. Okay? So, doon sa inyong um, uh, objectives, uh, first, um, it sometimes it helps to have a one general main objective. Tapos yung main objective will be divided into specific objectives. And yung specific objectives nyo, yun yung one, two, and three. Ini-scan ko lang yun. yun no? Kasi parang uh, statement of the problem, the, the statement aims to answer the following questions. So, dumirekta na agad tayo, no? The following questions. Tapos, ilagay nyo 1, 2, 3. So, to, to further improve our write-up, uh, una, mag-umpisa muna tayo on the main. Ano ba talaga yung talagang tinutubok na sinosolve natin? Yung malaking problem. And then, yung malaking problem, yun yung unang sentence, no? Yung, or, or unang paragraph. Yung malaking problem na sinosolve natin, yun ay dapat yung title natin. So, ilalagay natin. The main um, objective of the study is to identify the difference between or a comparative analysis on exclusive and co-ed academic environment of the grade 12 senior high school students. Specifically, it aims to address or answer the following questions. Number one, how will blah, blah, blah. Number two, what are the possible differences? And then number three, which kind of environment? Okay? So, ganun, no? Tapos, typically, guys, the last question, kasi may one, two, three, no? The last question will now capture the title or the main objective. So, uh, ang huling dapat na umapir dito is uh, yung tinatanong na natin. So, which do they prefer? 
Okay? So, yun yung environment. So, I think, um, tama ba yung intindi ko yung environment na tawag natin is yung preference nila whether co-ed or exclusive. Tama? Yes, po, miss. Okay. So, sakto tayo, no? Dahil yung third question natin, yun na mismo yung kumonek doon sa pinaka-title ng study natin. And then, bago mapunta kayo sa number three, ah, uh, nasagutan nyo muna dapat yung number one and then yung number two and then nasagutan nyo yung number three. Alright, now, um, yung um, with the sampling, with the sampling design, no, um, it appears to me you use a percentage. Tama ba? The formula that you use. Yes po, for stratified uh, random sampling po. So, you you assume a 50%. Tama ba po? Kasi 88 lahat yung enrollees, tama ba? 88 yung estudyante, no? Yes po, 88 Tap total. Okay, 88 total, you get 40. So, therefore, the, 40. The, the strategy that you use in determining the sample is to get the 50% of that. Tama ba po, guys? Yes, po, Miss. Okay, so why 50? Well, Miss, the main reason po why we only um, use 50%, not the whole population, uh, because uh, it was uh, too large for us to to handle. So that is why we uh, settled for only 40 respondents. But we also took in factor that because um, we were getting 50%, um, the Dominican students uh, that we um, we uh, gathered was uh, larger than the amount of Akinian students since their their population was larger than the Akinian population. So why not 40, why not 30, why not 60, why 50? Uh, 40 po in uh, the population. I mean, the total no, response mean, that we gathered, 40. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, why not 30%, why not 60%, why 50? Kasi tam tama naman yung sagot mo, um, Z. Riley, no, that... Uh, mahirapan kayo kung full, no? Dahil baka hindi lahat sumagot, okay? And then, um, pero ang ano ko doon is, why was the, what was the rationale behind choosing 50% and not 40% and not 60% or not 70%? Well, if you, if you were to use um, less than 50, po, like 40 and below, we, be, we believe that we wouldn't get um, that wasn't enough for us to to um, that wasn't an, uh, enough respondents for us to get a, a valid answer. That's why we used um, fifty percent, and we believe that um, larger than fifty percent was too large for us to handle. So that is why we settled for only fifty percent. And um, All right. to yes. add, um, if I may add, in our rationale, like we already know that we couldn't take on the whole population so from so from the 50 percent itself that we can really say that we can't really represent it because it's only 50 percent in our rationale we wanted to mitigate it somehow that even though it's only 50 50 percent we would be able to still represent a huge um or a large amount or a large percentage of the whole population which is why we didn't up for 40 percent and we didn't up for 60 percent we just wanted to be just right for us to handle and for us to represent. Okay, Liam. So uh, we want to, to get a particular percentage where we can be conclusive because it represents the majority and, and um, it will be easy for you to handle the project. No, But uh, majority ca can be 50 plus 1. No? The majority might be 50% plus 1. That's majority because if 50%, gumit na ka. Now, guys, it doesn't matter how many percent or how many people you've uh, really included in the research, as long as a literature tells you that this percentage is good enough, okay? So, dapat babalik tayo sa literature. Uh, pag sinabing, oh, uh, uh, 
we use 30. 30 is okay. 30 people is okay because 30 reach normality. No, yung 30, pag in we use a particular a parametric um, uh, uh, statistics, okay, yung 30 people, 30 respondents, no? um, ina-accept natin yun. Pero pag gagawa tayo ng sampling, as I, sabi nga ni Liam, the sample represents the population. So therefore, uh, very uh, cl clear tayo on getting that sample para maging conclusive tayo sa ating result okay so yun lang kailangan back up siya ng literature why 50% actually 40 is not even 50% of the 88 kasi 88 is naging 40 tayo um typically yan dapat umo over tayo pa, um para uh, by the way guys i'm uh, giving this direction kasi i think there are also listeners who would be future the, the future grade 12 no in the house no so para Ma parang may semi lecture na tayo dito no okay so uh, the literature should back up eh hahanap kayo ng literature na nagsasabi na ah, dapat ganto pala yung number na amin kukuhanin okay and for everyone's knowledge is the best no yung pinaka madalas na ginagamit for sampling is called slovens formula okay ito yung ito talagang everybody is um, using it for so long a time and it's acceptable the sloven formula and will now determine whether it is five percent error or ten percent error depende five percent error for medical application for non-medical ten percent error is okay dito kasi sinabi nyo fifty percent error malaki yon kapag sinabi natin with the fifty percent error um uh major it's not it's not it may, may not be hold true. Baka hindi kayo 50% error. No? Baka nasa ano kayo, uh, le less than, uh, ang error niya is less than 50 kung gagamit tayo na Sloven formula. So, after this uh, panel, uh, you may now go to the library and look for the Sloven formula and select 10% error and see how many will be uh, the, uh, the amount. Okay, baka pagpasok yung 40, kasi 40 kayo, no? ito yung guide ko sa inyo ha. Pagpasok yung 40, so kunin mo na yung formula, ipasok yung 88 as a number of population, ipasok yung 10% error, tignan ano yung lalabas. Kapag ang lumabas ay, kapag may lumabas na number doon at mas marami yung 40 kaysa sa number doon, then ang sasabihin nyo, you are 10% error. Okay? Sampling kasi po. tayo. Oo, ganun ang gagawin natin. Ngayon, guys, ulit ha, pagka kailangan mas equal or greater than yung makocompute nyo na sample versus dun sa 40 na ginamit ninyo. Para masabi nyo 10% error. Ngayon, kapag nag 10% error kayo, babalik kayo dun sa tabular value ng chi-square. Babalik kayo sa value ng chi-square. Hindi na 50% ang gagamitin nyo. Ang gagamitin nyo na is 10%. Okay, so pag after nito, uh, pag may question, you can uh, always ask my uh, my personal email or or chat. No, I I can uh, help you out. Okay, so I hope this one is clear. No, because very important yung uh, data niyo. Eh. Data niyo has uh, yung yun yung addition yun to the body of knowledge. Kaya very careful tayo when it comes to the selection of samples. As long as it is backed up by the literature, no problem. Basta sinabi ng literature, oh, get the 50% of the sample is represents blank percent of error, then mas uh, conclusive tayo. Okay? Mas conclusive tayo pag ganun. Okay? So, um, so next is the research design. Uh, you, you, in your research design, you said uh, survey method. Uh, discuss mo na natin. So, yung design ninyo is descriptive. And then, yung data gathering ninyo is using primary uh, sources from survey. Okay? So, yun yung inyong data gathering ninyo is from primary sources and that is survey. It, actually, yung recording yata nito mabibigay naman sa inyo, no? Tama ba, ma'am, no? Yung recording mabibigay, okay? Yes, so, descriptive, decide, uh, okay, descriptive comparative analysis, yan ang ginamit ninyo. Descriptive comparative analysis and the data gathering procedure is from primary sources survey. 
yung survey ninyo ay tinatawag na research instrument. So yung research instrument niyo kayo gumawa, tama? Okay. So paano niyo Oh yeah, curious lang ako ah. How do you come up with the questions in the survey questionnaires? Um Miss, may, may I answer first then my group mates will oh. in our rationale for creating the <clears throat> The, re the, sur the questions for the survey, first we went back to our statement of the problem. So in that statement of the problem, we, you, as you can see in our survey, this, uh, in our, the questions of our survey, there is a question there like, how was the transition for you? So yes, um, we got our, a lot of our questions, we, it mainly stem like a branch from the main tree, which is the statement of the problem. So we would ask, how was their performance such as recitation and communication with their classmates which is how we thought of the a lot of those questions there okay sige so ginawa nyo mr liam uh, and uh, liam is that you identify a question per i per statement of the problem yes we uh, also tried to review it if it can really match because um, before those final questions, there were a lot of questions there that we also removed because we didn't feel like uh, we didn't feel that it was related to the to, uh, it was it will be utilized to answer our statement of the problems. Okay, okay. So uh, just to to repeat what you have said, you have three statement of the problem, and then each of the statement of the problem you identify a question on each of the three. Tama. Okay. So now, okay. So actually, guys, um, uh, in the in the whole research process, uh, yung survey question is very important. Yon, no? example, uh, sinabi natin na we feel like or the team feel like. So ibig sabihin, it is the team who decided what is supposed to be in the survey questionnaire. So sa research, uh, magkakaroon ng subjectivity dahil feel nung yun yung naramdaman or yun yung thinking nung gumagawa ng research. So therefore. To remove that in other research, ang ginagawa nila, they subject the survey questionnaire into a so-called validity and reliability test to be sure na hindi yung galing sa opinion ninyo. It's galing from a scholarly opinion, from experts, from people na may mga, parang natawag tayo mga jurors or panel na nagsasabi na, ah, okay na yung question ninyo. And then sinasubject natin siya sa ibang mga test para malaman natin, oh, tama yung nalagay nyo dito question. Okay, so def, but but it's not it's okay for your for a high school uh, student to have this sets of question and you're able to establish the questions. No, okay, yon at nakita kayo. Liter, sempre you get it from the review of literature as well. No, nagbasa kayo, nakita yon. Ito palay dapat na mga questions. But for the future for future reference, dapat yung question is not subjective. Uh, we can uh, help the valid validity and reliability test to uh, qualify our survey questionnaire. Uh, tingin ko naman medyo applicable naman din yung mga komento sa inyo sa susunod na team. So, para kayo yung unang nasa lang. No? Okay? Para kayo yung unang na, na anuhan. Okay, now, um, tapos guys, um, pwedeng hindi nyo nilagyan ng question yung tatlong tanong. Pwedeng hindi. Kasi bakit? Sa so, number one, you want to, to know how the transition affects Dapat sinama nyo na yung social at saka isa, dalawang aspeto kayo sa yun. Sa number one statement, uh, nags, nagpasagot na kayo. So nagsasagot na sila ng tinatawag nating Likert scale. No? Yung, yung strongly agree, ag, strongly agree, agree, neutral, yan. Likert scale tawag. No? Tapos yung number two, ang sasagot nun kay square. No? Number one, kinuha nyo, tapos sasabihin nyo, is there a significant difference? Tapos number three, Pag sinabi, yes, there is a significant difference. So, number three, ano ngayon ang difference? So, ibig sabihin, guys, hindi dapat, nilag hindi dapat nilagyan yung tanong lahat. Kasi, one, two, three, link yun eh. Yung mga problem, yung statement of the problem, one, yung sagot doon, magagamit sa two, yung two, magagamit sa three. Okay? So, yun, ano? So, ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin doon, uh, kung na question nyo, lahat na lahat ng question na yun na kanina, binigay ninyo, nilagay nyo sa number one, so masasabi nyo na yung how, no? ito pala yung mga nakaka-impact, nakaka-affect sa kanilang performance. 
Tapos, nag-chi-square kayo. Sabi nyo, reject the null hypothesis. Yun nga yung nasagot sa number two. There is significant difference. Meron, no? Tapos number three, so ano ngayon ang mas okay? Anong environment? Meron pa lang significant difference, eh. So ano ngayon ang okay? Co-ed or exclusive? Kasi nagot nyo, co-ed. Did you get the point, guys, no? So, yes, pwede, yes. Pin, yes, pwede pinagsama-sama na niya lahat yung tanong. Yun ay sagot sa number one. Yung chi-square sagot sa number two. Tapos, dun sa sagot sa number one, aalamin nyo dahil sinabi may significant difference. So, ano yung majority? Yun nga yun ang, dahil majority ay co-ed, eh co-ed ang sagot sa number three. Okay? So, ganun yung flow natin. So, so hindi dapat nilagyan ng tanong bawat isa. All along, lahat ng inanalyze yun, nasagot na yung 1, 2, and 3. The questionnaire is only one set for number 1. Number 2 is the statistical treatment of chi-square. Okay, the chi-square is a goodness of fit. This is the lowest form of statistical analysis for nominal data. Okay, nominal, categorical. So, dapat... Uh, pag sinabi strongly agree, agree, wala dapat level of high, low, high, low. Kasi nominal ang chi-square, categorical. Significant difference using chi-square is okay for nominal. Example, sinabi natin, uh, what is the difference between the opinion of the female and the male? Female tsaka male, walang number yun eh. Nominal kasi sila eh, category sila, male, female. What is the, kung yun ang tanong, chi-square. Ngayon, um, Pwede kung Likert scale, okay pa rin na, na nilagay natin yung, yung ano, yung, ang chi-square kasi alternatively can also be used for uh, significant difference or significant relationship, okay? But uh, it could have been better if we have used T-test. T-test, no? Tignan nyo kung magagawa nyo yung T-test, it could have been better if T-test. Kasi uh, pag t-test, nakukunin yung mean, yung mean nung sagot. You don't need to get the mean, the mode. Kasi nakita ko, pinakita nyo yung mean mode, no? So, papakita nyo lang t-test, uh, ikaw compare nyo means. Tapos sasabihin niya, is there a significant difference? Yes or no? Yes, we reject the hypothesis. So, which is better? Yun ang tanong na number three. So, what is the environment they prepare? Wha wha whoever had the highest mean, yun ang prevail, yun ang panalo. So, dapat highest mean yung uh, co-ed kasi sila yung best environment. Okay? So, oh, ngayon, dahil ginamit natin chi-square, uh, okay pa rin yung chi-square, may uh, degrees of freedom ang ginagamit. Medyo may ipaplakado nyo yung sagot 1 to 40. May Excel file 1 to 40. Kunin yung degrees of freedom ng bawat isa, then compute. Ganun dapat, no? Okay? Yung sagot nila mismo na 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Parang kinoconsider natin na walang, high, walang ranking, walang degree of rank. Degrees of freedom lang ang, ang kinukuha natin. Yun ang chi-square. Okay? Kinonsider mo silang kahit sila ay agree or nag-disagree, pareho lang sila ng level. Walang mataas, walang mababa. Chi-square. So, okay pa din yung chi-square. Kasi hindi, hindi tayo naglalagay ng ng degree na mataas o mababa. Okay? So, um, other than that, um, alright, I think, ah, sa conclusion na lang. Conclusion, so conclusion, sagutin yung number one, two, three. We therefore conclude that number one, ito'y sagot. Number two, there is significant difference. Malalagay nyo. That hypothesis, hypothesis deposited, uh, posited at the beginning of the the study is rejected. No, that's a big one. What are the findings? Shone. That's number three. They prefer the. That's a good thing. You by hierarchy of the problem. Isa isa. So, ko tatlo yung ano yun? Tatlo din yung sagot niyo. Okay. So I think that's um that's a. Uh, so, counting counting ayus lang. Pwede nyo na itong i-present sa publication. <laughs> mag-present kayo sa labas, no? Slovens for me. Ah, mag-present ano kayo, mag kayo sa mga conferences.
Okay, thank you guys and the maganda yung study. Thank you po, Doctor. We are grateful for your insights and your views. Thank, thank you, you very much po, Ms. Canlan. Thank, thank you po. po. Maraming maraming salamat. Let's have um, congratulations, Group 1. You can now um, chill and listen to the second presenter. That would be David and Matthew Adrias with the title, A Phenomenal Study of Students Conducting Home-Based Science Experiments. Hello, Bob. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Matthew Adrias from Grade 12 STEM, and I'm here to present my research titled A Phenomenal Study of Students Conduct Conducting Home-Based ex Science Experiments. Here are the segments that we are encountering for today's presentation. The introduction, the introduction, materials and methods, uh, results, implications, and solutions, and the acknowledgements. For our, for our introduction, this research study seeks to determine the experiences of students performing experiments at home. Our problem is, due to COVID-19 pandemic, schools have switched to online learning. Therefore, educators can't provide their students with the educational practices leading them to process learning and learning in the actual classroom setting, specifically on performing science experiments. However, these kinds of activities need equipment and tools necessary for the completion of its procedure and outcome. Unlikely, the online learning modality during the pandemic paved limitations and conduct of experiments. The researchers have hypothesized that Home-based experiments can help learners in understanding science subject activities, whether there, are, there is or absence of equipment used in science laboratories and home-based experiments. Limit the understanding of science subject activities because of the ab absence of equipment used in science laboratories. Here are some research questions that we provided the participants. Experiments in any field or area and be able to learn both ac academically and personally through experiences. For our sampling procedure, the study will make use of a convenience type of sampling because the sample and our participants are based on their availability and time. And as for the data gathering instrument, the, we made a researcher made survey questionnaire. Results. We've gathered 14 participants from different schools and asked them about their experiences conducting experiments at home. We questioned the participants about their performances, challenges, and developments of conducting experiments at home. As you can see here from the charts, 13 out of 14 students do experiments at home and half of them do it once every quarter. In the bar graph below, we had them rate their performances while performing experiments at home, five being the highest and one being the lowest. As you can see, eight of the 14 participants had rated their performance of four, while three others gave the highest rating and only one rated the lowest, which is two. Implications and solutions. As to further explain the results, our objective is to determine the experiences of the participants. The main topic for the students is their preparations before experimenting, the safety measures they do, their perspective and challenges doing home experiments, and, what's, and what skills have they developed conducting experiments at home. 
In preparing, the participants said that they research or study what kind of experiment they are going to do. They also buy the materials needed beforehand. In doing their safety measures, they wear protective gear and work in a spacious environment. As for the students, as for the students' perspective in conducting experiments at home, they mentioned, they mentioned that their home is a safe place to perform such activities, but prefer to do experiments at school because it is very challenging having the lack of guidance and materials. As for their, as for their development, they observed that they became more independent and more resourceful. For our, for our acknowledgement, I'd like to give thanks to our teacher, Ms. Susie Alavado, for assisting and supporting this research, to the respondents that participated in our collecting of data, and to, and to the panelists for giving their time to listen to this presentation. That is all. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Po. So that should be all, Dr. Ria. Um, by the way, I'd like to reiterate po na while he is using we as part of his presentation, yeah, he is supposed to have at least two other members, but I had to remove them because of like on and off communication with the rest of the groups and then without any um, participation later after, especially before the Congress. And so he um, came to proceed alone in the paper. All right. So, David, actually, yun yung una kong sasabihin. No, no una ko nakita your solo, no? So, that's a very brave act. Mahirap pag solo. None of your first time. Um, may nakita ko ganyan solo siya sa thesis. Gumawa siya na isang product. And now, he is a, a very renowned award-winning researcher. Natutuwa ako sa kanya. So, syempre, the solo... Okay, so um, yung um, phenomenological study falls under qualitative research and um, as opposing a qualitative research. No? Qualitative, I mean. Yung data treatment kasi natin can be qualitative or quantitative. No? I try to analyze how you were able to come up with your data how you gather your data, and how you uh, make the analysis and interpretation. Okay, so first of all, yung um, statement of the problem um, stated in just one whole chunk. It's a one whole, um, one whole statement, but very unclear to me what is it that you really wanted to know, okay? Gusto mo ba malaman kung... Um, uh, ano yung, kasi sinasabi, study of students conducting home-based science experiments. So, uh, capturing of experience. Ganun lang, no? Tama ba? Yun yung gusto mo mangyari. Just to capture the experience, whether that be okay or not okay. Basta you just wanted to capture the experience and describe it. Tama ba, David? Yes, po. Okay. So, ano lang. Um, may, ano lang, no? Medyo... I, I, ano lang natin, I clear out lang natin that you wanted to get that experience to capture that. Doon mo ipun, doon nung doon mo ipunto lalo na yung uh, pag uh, pagkwento mo ng istorya doon sa sa iyong statement of the problem, puntuhin mo na whatever experience it is. Lived experience ang tawag natin diyan. Yan yung madami nang susulat na lived experience. In fact, Ngayon yung sa COVID, may mga live experience. Example, yung parents, may live experience yung teacher, may live experience yung research, um, bata, yung students. No? And it does not matter whether how many participants. Basta ang mangyari dito, to capture all that experience, whether it be good or not good. Okay? Minsan hindi natin sinasabi yung bad. <laughs> Nasabi lang natin, okay or not okay. Pero hindi tayo nagsasabi ng negative typically on our research. So, pero dapat na-capture yun. No? Dapat on the, because these are experiences, na-capture natin yung uh, yung mga kakaibang uh, experience na nangyari. Okay? So, in other words, in the in the way that you uh, question or data gather, dapat 
uh, pinaghalo yung structured and non-structured questionnaire. In fact, um, yung live experience kasi baka hindi na-capture yon by survey questionnaire kasi um, naka, naka ano eh, parang hindi na sila natanong kung ano ba talaga naramdaman mo? Okay ba to? Ganito ba yung nangyari sa'yo? Okay. So, ang um, ang nangyari is nag-focus ka into four questions. Tama ba? Four questions yung nilagay mo, tas survey question, no? Okay. Tapos, tama ba na 14 yung studyante? 14 lang po. Okay, 14. So, dapat itong 14, uh, David, you should have gathered them. Nag, ano kayo, nag, uh, ewan ko baka ganun ginawa mo. Nag-Zoom ba kayo? Nag-Zoom meeting kayo? And then, pinasagutan mo sa kanila and then tinanong mo sila ng mga tanong na ano yung experience mo? So, describe an experience doon sa questions mo. Tapos, pag meron kang set of questions, tapos hindi na-capture, kukunin mo yon kasi experience yun eh. You get my point na, David? So, eh, baka, describe nila yung experience nila. Yes, focus group discussion is better. Focus group discussion, sabay-sabay mo silang i-gather, tapos tanongin mo sila, ano experience mo? Tanong mo yung questions mo, no? Tapos, be, ang, ang, ang minsan sa focus group discussion, kinakapture natin, ilan yung naka-experience ng ganun, ilan na ka, uh, at ano yung mga experience na hindi mo na-capture sa question mo, pero kukurin mo pa rin yun. Tama yun, yun ang F focus group, FGD. That's the best, ah, uh, Kahit 14 lang yan, kahit 10 lang sila, kahit 5 lang sila, it does not matter. Basta ma-capture mo. No? Tapos pag kasi nasabi natin, so what is now yung pinaka-best experience? Ano yung pinaka-best experience nila? So ipapasok mo yung um, kung sino yung pinaka-maraming nagsabi na yung experience nila na parang pare-pareho yung pagkaka-intindi mo at pagkaka-describe nila na experience, yun na ngayon ang masasabi mo na na naging ano naging a uh, winning experience on this kind of subject matter okay so but since um you have laid down questions uh it describe mo yung feeling na yon na nakita nila doon sa mga questions na sinend sinend mo sa kanila okay then um um Yung hypothesis is always negated. Hypothesis is always stated negative. So, ganun talaga yun. Uh, when we want to test a hypothesis, it is, misa may nagtatanong, so ba't negative? It's the statistical lingo. It's a language of statistics. That all we test is always the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is always stated negatively. Para kasing positive yung dating sa akin nung parehong uh, nilagay mo na HO tsaka HA. Diba yung HA is the alternative? At the alternative is just the positive of the negative. Pero for us to, um, to, for us to test, the hypothesis should always be negative. Tapos, um, ano yung, um, what is the tool that rejects? No? Kailangan meron kang uh, pagbabasihan na tool na ginamit mo para masabi mong ito ay reject. Okay? So, parang katulad nung kanina, yung group 1, no? Yung group 1, uh, kinompare nila kung exclusive or eco, eco ed Tapos nakita nila may significant difference kasi gumamit sila ng sky-square para i, i, ano, i, i malaman, i-reject ko ba? Very certain ang pag-reject. So, can you tell me now, David, uh, what tool has been used or how do you arrive at, do you reject or accept the hypothesis? Uh, for me, po, uh, I reject the hypothesis because um, the, when we, when we uh, ask the students for the experiences, uh, all of the answers were negative. They didn't want. They, they didn't. They didn't. Uh, they prefer laboratory experiments, experimenting instead of uh, at home experimenting because it was more easier and easier and um, more not not challenging. 
So, mas okay ang experiment sa school kaysa sa home. Yun na lumabas na experience, tama ba? Yes po. Okay, so dapat yung statement, uh, hypothesis natin, home-based experiment is very challenging to the learners in understanding blah, blah, blah. So ibig, dapat negative ang pagka-state natin, tapos i-reject mo siya. So ipag ni-reject mo siya, so ibig sa, ah, it's not, uh, it's not challenging. So, nireject mo siya. Challenging pala. No? Hindi pala okay na gumawa na experiment sa bahay. So, so ngayon, um, lagyan mo lang ng um, tool, no? Kung paano mo siya nireject. Hindi kasi pwede tayo mag-reject. Uh, yung researcher cannot reject. What, but you can only reject the hypothesis based on the treatment, the data treatment that you have used, kung ano man yung statistical treatment na ginamit mo. Kahit kasi 14 lang, uh, makakakuha ka dyan ng mga other types of statistical treatment that you can use para lang ma-reject mo siya. Okay? So, and then, um, then yung last mo is, uh, actually, okay sana yung pagka-present ng ano mo, nung conceptual framework, no? IPO, ang tawag mo dito, IPO model, tatlo yung box, Input, process, output. Tatlo, no? Input, process, output. So, input mo, dapat nakalagay sa input mo, experiences of the respondents. Tapos yung process, lagay mo, focus group discussion. Uh, kaya lang nilagay mo, survey questionnaire. Ganun ang ano, process, no? Tapos yung output mo, the, uh, the experience. The measured experience or the described experience, yun ang iyong output, okay? So, yun yung IPO. Uh, kanina, sorry ya, pero I have to go back doon sa group 1. Guys, yung, yung group 1, your, your uh, conceptual framework should only be two boxes. Two boxes lang kasi nagko-compare. Kaya isang box ko and yung isa uh, exclusive. Tapos may line lang na ganun. Dalawang box. Sa isa ko ed sa isa exclusive tapos may line no dalawang box tapos i-connect niyo ng line na diretso nagko-comparative ang ibig ko compare niyo yung dalawa okay okay po so, okay ganun lang so going back to you David tama yung pagka-present mo tatlo IPO model so basta ayusin mo lang no yung experiences survey and then last is the measured experience. Okay? Tapos yung may apat ka na ginawa, preparation, safety, perspective, development. Uh, this for ano ba to, David? Uh, for me, I think they're the the main questions of our paper. Because uh, we want the experiences of the students. So, I focus the, the questions on their on how they prepare before experimenting and what what they encounter what challenges they encounter and what what skills they develop in uh, conducting experiments at home okay so yung apat na to preparation safety perspective development uh may nilagay ka mga questionnaire doon kasi di describe nila experience nila tama ba okay so yes, okay para so pwede mo pa siya lang ilagay sa ayong objective now that you want to to capture experiences in terms of preparation, safety, perspective development. And then tapos sa huli na measure mo yung kanilang um yung kanilang uh, what you call this yung katama naglagay ka ng mga result sa bawat isa, di ba no? Okay. Tapos sa conclusion mo, you conclude the experience describing it as they prefer to do it in school. Ganun tal ganun tal kasi they reject my hypothesis eh. So kailangan talaga very yun talaga ko very clear yung conclusion na ganun. Okay, David? Yes po. Okay, sige. Sige, so you have questions ba, David? Ano pang gagawin? Nan na pampo. All right, thank you David and thank you for the courage. Ah. Sige po daw. Thank you very much, Po. I hope that you will be inspired to um, write more researches kahit mag-isa po siya. Anyway, Po, um, 
let's have the third and last presenter for today. That would be uh, the group of Afabla, Charles Andre, Evangelista Alejandre, Nobela Jose Andrew, and Tedoso Harold Agen with the title Enhancing the Academic Performance of Senior High School Students in English Subjects Through Video Game Activities. Go ahead, Bo. Kita na po. Am I heard na po? Hello. Yes po. We can hear you po. Okay po. So, the value Oh, wait. Lang po is video pa lang. Okay. So, the evaluation of a student's academic achievement in a variety of subject is referred to as academic performance. Academic success is essential for a young person's social development. The student's productivity has an impact on their grades. At the same time, productivity is defined as having a disciplined mindset and the motivation to act. Being productive entails doing what we want rather than what we are compelled to do by circumstance. This way of thinking is a mental illness. Productivity accelerates and produces the desired outcomes. The theory of education productivity by Herbert J. Wahlberg investigates the factors that influence learning. The impact of learning on a student's academic performance, Herbert J. Wahlberg used a variety of methodologies to determine how many factors influence a student's academic progress. His hypothesis was tested using a variety of methods, and he conducted over 3,000 investigations. Academic achievement is influenced by a variety of social eco economic factors, Video gaming, according to this theory, has an effect on a student's academic performance. Good afternoon to all. My name is Alejandre Evangelista. And with my fellow researchers, Mr. Charles Sapable, Mr. Jose Andrew Nobela, and Mr. Harold Chodosho, we are the researchers of Aquinas School Grade 12 STEM, and we will be discussing our research entitled Enhancing the Academic Performance of senior high school students in English subject through video game activities. But before we get into the main body of the research, let me first introduce to you our research. So, video games have become increasingly popular as technology progresses, particularly among the younger generation or what's so-called the Gen Z or our generation. Some devote a small amount of time to it, while others make a living out of it, skipping school and other activities to spend time with their consoles. And the goal of this study is to find out what or how video games affect students' educational achievement with a focus on the subject of English. It is limited to Aquinas School senior high school students. The researchers will provide relevant information about the study's problem and background. The study statement will provide the researchers with the list of questions to consider as they conduct their investigation. The study's outcome or outcomes are displayed in the hypothesis. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, so this is uh, our review of related editors or uh, context of or summary of our chapter two. This uh, based on Queens Queensland University of Technology has found that games can improve thinking skills in children. Games often require children to follow instructions 
consider their actions and respond to the problems. Then, uh, wait lang. Uh, uh, balik lang. Then, uh, this can help develop important thinking skills such as awareness of the environment, attention to the details, problem solving and planning, and literacy. By this, video games are not just a time-consuming event that students just waste their time, but rather it is training for them and also a time for enjoyment. Next. Ah, uh, yun. Uh, wait lang. Nakamit mo na. Sorry. The hypothesis of our study will focus on null and alternative hypotheses. It will be further know if either of it has significant change or not to the student's academic progress. Next one. Um, so, good afternoon to all. So, this is the materials and method that we used. So, sa research design, the researchers will apply the descriptive, descriptive quantitative research design or so-called um, yung descriptive quantitative research kasi is in a way na i-evaluate namin yung the positive and negative effects of playing video games um, such that nagko-concern din siya through academics, probably time management and possible performance whenever he or she includes kapag my group works siya. So, sa sample, sample and sampling technique, so we used the researchers, us, us researchers use deliberate sampling and purposive sampling kasi in deliberate, we select respondents na madaling makareach ng connections with them. So, and in uh, purposive sampling kasi, which us researchers rely on their judgment um, when whenever choosing members to participate in our study, mostly our surveys. So, we probably we select sample based on their knowledge um, we study about the study and population. So in our research survey, we also we also chose 30 respondents to have, to have their opinions regarding our study. Um, our study entitled Enhancing the Academic Performance Through Video Game Activities. So the research in instrument, so we researchers use Google Forms to collect data for our research. <coughs> And from our study, we'll be we'll be comparing to our survey questionnaires. I I mean we'll compare the my experiences nila, um, with their including with their unbiased opinions when it comes to academics. And then is on video games. So, so lastly, the so data analysis analysis. Um, most of the students are neutral when it comes to answering our study. So regarding, regardless of their experiences of and opinions, and how, I what or how would they benefit some study like tulad ng playing online games benefit you in your everyday life. So the majority of the responses of the respondents answered neutral when it comes to if they benefit yung games from everyday life. So, and like playing games, ex um, so do playing games expand your knowledge about languages? So, this is the question that most of the respondents agree in which playing online games expand their vo vocabulary 
or like playing word games like ganun po. Next. So good afternoon everyone. In this next slides, hello, rinig po ba? So good afternoon everyone. In this next slides, we will show you the summary of results that came out on our study. So the majority of our respondents spend one to two hours and three to four hours playing video games. But we also found that we have respondents who devote seven hours and more on playing video games. Next slide. So as you have seen in this figure, there are two types of video games that our respondents prepare to play. These types of video games are MOBA or also known as Multiplayer Online Battle Arena and FPS or TPS games or you, you are also known as First Person Shooting and Third Person Shooting. Next slide. So, about this question, do you think that playing video games enhances your English skills? And this is the results that, can, that came out. The majority of our respondents agreed that video games help okay. the improvement of their skills. So, according to the results that came out, we can say that playing video games really helps in expanding the knowledge of senior high school students regarding regarding the english subjects perhaps the majority of our respondents agreed that playing video games really helped them in their study of the english subjects we researchers found out found that our study was good and correct that's all thank you Okay, so to conclude, video games have a direct positive effects on students when it comes to their academic performance. This current student generation is into video games that they make it as an escape to the real world and rest or have fun in the imaginary world. Playing video game is not just a time-consuming task, but playing video games contributes to the students that we didn't expect. We always focus on the negative side of playing video games that we ignored the positive side of it. So the research or this research is a tool in the future to prove that video games are not just for fun but also for performance development, not just for students but also for the other individuals. Uh, as for uh, the presentation is finished, uh, we would like to express our gratitude to our hardworking subject teacher in applied researches, Susie Alvado, and also to our guest panelists who took the time to be present in this virtual setup of the research conference, uh, Dr. Ria uh, Canlas, and to the community of Aquinas and Dominican College for your overwhelming participation in this. Uh, said uh, research before. Okay, there you go. Thank you very much, last group. Now, um, Dr. Ria, it's time for you to state your comments and suggestions for the third and last group. Thank you, Paul. All right. Masaya na sila kasi last group na. <laughs> mag na after. Okay, so... Um, Thank you, Group 3 and uh, Alejandre, para kang reporter. Magaling kang mag-present, okay? <laughs> uh, very defined ka magsalita. Okay, so um, enhancing the academic performance of senior high school students in English through video game activities. Uh, actually, um, I would like to commend all the topics of the three teams kasi very relevant no, at times. 
yung mga topics na napili nyo o aayusin yung pagsusulat nito at i-include natin yung mga comments, pwede itong ma-publish kasi very relevant at times. No? So, um, in the statement of the problem, yung group na ito, medyo, ito yung pinaka-okay yung pagka-state na problem, no? Kasi, inumpisahan nila sa, first is the demographic profile, and um, siguro yung kasunod, no? not just demographic, eh, kasama yung the video game activity. Tapos yung number two, gusto nilang uh, malaman yung um, academic performance, and then number four, significant relationship. Number three, significant relationship. Pero yung number four, hindi ko maintindihan kasi nakalagay to the factors influencing academic performance. So, baka typo error to. No? I'm not sure if this is a typo error yung problem number four ninyo kasi it's not a it's not a complete um, sentence. Alright. So, uh, puta tayo dun sa study proper natin. No? Um, I, I, I had some numerous um comments dito, I don't know if uh, possible pa nating uh, makakuha ng data to further improve this. No? But first of all, there are two variables that we are talking about here. Pag nagsulat, no, in your um, conceptual framework, malino doon, nilalagay nyo independent dependent variable. So, ano nga yung inyong dependent variable? What is your dependent variable? Your what is your dependent and independent variable? Group four, please unmute your mic and answer the question box. Are you guys still there? Please unmute your mic, group four. Mukhang ginabahan po si Alejandre. Please unmute your mic and try to answer the question po. Mukhang kinabahan na ang last group dahil pang huli na po, Doc. <laughs> Saglit pa, let me call their attention po. Okay, so dalawa yung variable, no? O sige, yung dalawang variable, ano yung dalawang variable that we are talking about in this thesis? In this thesis? Hey, miss, um, let me answer that po. So yung... <laughs> Sorry po. Um, so our independent variable is, no, naka, is as far as I remember nakalagay that is grade 11 and 12 students. Tapos age and gender po. Tapos the, de the dependent variable is nakalagay is playing video games po. Okay. So ganito, no? So may dalawang variable. Yung isa, performance in English. Yung isa, video game activity. Okay? Tapos, gusto natin malaman kung nakaka-apekto ba? May, may significant relationship ba between these two? Dapat ganun ang pagka-state natin. Okay? Dalawang variable yun eh, minimeasure natin. Nakaka-apekto ba sa English performance ang playing of video games? Okay, now. So, statement problem number one, alisin na yung demographic profile kasi hindi naman yata niya yung interest malaman yung effect ng demographic profile sa English at sa kanilang grades. No? Ang lagay na lang na, yung demographic profile ninyo, yung diniscuss nyo, yung age, gender, yung mga yon ilagay na siya sa chapter 3. Dini-describe ninyo yung uh, respondents ninyo. Ang itira nyo doon ay yung um, video game activity profile. Okay? So yung video game activity profile ninyo sa nakita ko doon sa mga table na presa sa PowerPoint, 
meron kayong uh, hours of playing the game, types of game that they play. Di ba? Gana, no? Gana yung mga tanong niya. Tama, no? Okay? Yun yung number one. Video game activities. Number two, academic performance. Now, guys, Uh, yung academic performance kasi, minensyon nyo kasi yung term na yun eh, di ba? Academic performance is Uh, affects your performance in English, sasagot sila, oo, oh, oo, oh, 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 hindi. Dapat, ang kinuha nyo, grades ng bata. O kaya, ga, grades. So, yung grades na yun, guys, readily, makukuha nyo yung data na yan. Please request lang kayo doon sa registrar, ito, through your teacher. Pwede ba namin mo kayong grades itong 30 respondents namin. Okay? Kuha niyo yung point, no? Unless kung vocabulary pinag-uusapan, ano ba talaga gusto natin i-focus, guys? Is it the vocabulary skills or academic performance? Doc, yung academic performance. Okay. So, kung academic performance ang focus mo, Alejandre, kailangan grades in English. Okay, grades in English ng tatlong pong tao, no? Now, yun yung sagot nyo sa number two. Tapos sa uh, problem number three, relationship. Okay? So, is there a significant relationship between the video game activities and the academic performance of the students in English? Yun dapat ang tanong sa number three. May relationship ba? Okay? Yan, yeah, no? Tapos, number four, implications ng relationship. Kung na-establish na may relationship o wala, kasi nilagay nyo enhancing the academic performance. So, dapat sa number four, magpapasok na kayo ng enhancement. O paano natin may enhance? No, pwede, pwede nyo alisin nyo yung enhancing. So, may option kayo, guys. Ha? Again, your option would be Retaining the topic, the, the title, enhancing the academic performance. If you retain this, dapat yung problem number four ninyo is about enhancing the performance. But if we will remove the enhancing, ilalagay na lang natin the relationship or correlation between. Ang, ang typical na ginagamit yan, correlation. The correlates of or the relationship between. Okay, the relationship between academic performance of senior high school in English and video game activities. So kapag uh, yun lang ang ginamit nyo, inalis nyo yung word na enhancement, relationship lang ang kukunin nyo, yung statement, na, yung statement nyo hanggang, yung problem nyo hanggang number three lang. Did you get the point, no, guys? Nakuha nyo yun, no? Okay? Pero pag sinama niyo yung enhancing the academic, uh, maglalagay tayo na number four, yung implication. Okay? Next. Um, yung conceptual framework, dahil relationship, ang may hawig yung conceptual framework nyo sa conceptual framework ni number one. Si number one nagko-compare. Kaya ang relay, ang ang box nila, dalawang box, dependent siya ka independent variable, tas line. Sa inyo, ganun din, pero hindi line, arrow. Okay? Nakaka-affect ba yung game sa grades? Kaya, yung isa yung box, video game activity, yung isang box, academic performance, tapos talagay yung arrow papunta yung, papunta dun sa academic performance. Na gets nyo guys, no? Kasi nakaka-affect ba tong video game activity dito kay 
Academ kay academic performance. So, may arrow. Yun ang kaibahan nyo sa one. Kasi si number one, comparative. So, walang arrow. Kasi nagko-compare lang sila ko, ed or exclusive. Sa inyo, gusto nyo malaman, may, may effect ba? So, dahil may effect siya, dapat may arrow papunta. Okay? So, ganun ang gawin nyo sa inyong um, uh, what you call this? Uh, conceptual framework. Kung relationship lang. Okay? Pero kung i-retain -re ninyo yung word na enhancing at magkakaroon pa kayo ng implication or enhancement, magkakaroon kayo ng third. Yun yung pag-e-enhance yun. Na kung paano nila ma-e-enhance yung kanilang performance. Okay? Clear tayo doon, guys, no? So, tama yung inyong uh, research design, descriptive, uh, quantitative. Ilalaba, ilalagay lang natin sa atin ang data, data treatment natin, correlations. Nakulangan tayo ng uh, correlations. Na, 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 uh, pansin nyo yung group 1, yung group one nag-chi-square. Pansin nyo nag-chi-square sila, no? Binalidate nila. Doon sa kanilang, um, sa kanilang data, sa, sa graph ni group 1, kitang-kita nila na pabor ang mga tao sa coed pero hindi sila nag-stop doon. They validate it. Nagkaroon muna sila ng chi-square para malaman, makompare kung may significant difference or not. So sa inyo, para masagot nyo yung relationship, kailangan nyo magkaroon ng statistical treatment. I suggest that you use, um, kung gagawin yung categorical yung playing videos, Pwede ka rin kayo mag chi square din. Pwede kayong pa-tutor sa group 1 on chi square. Pwede rin chi square. Okay, pwede rin namang kung i-upgrade ninyo into higher form yung uh, video game activity, gagawin yung Likert scale yung sagot. Pwede na kayo mag-analysis of variance or ANOVA. So pop susundan niyo yung pattern ng group number 1, okay? And um May I ask why 30 respondents, guys? Uh, Alejandre, nagsasalita ka, no? Pero hindi naririnig. Okay na po. Rinig okay, na po okay, pa? Okay, okay yes. na po. So, let me answer the question po, Doc. No? So, the main reason of why we chose to have 30 respondents only because of the limited... Uh, students here in Aquinas because the three strands or the STEM, ABM, and Humes are in the same class. So, magkaka, magkakadugtog-dugtog yun in, I think, ang total po namin dito is around 40 plus lang po. So, syempre, and the second um, reason po namin would be the safe zone. No? So, lagi nga pong 30 po ang laging mga respondents pagdating po sa mga ganyan. Yun lang. Okay. So, 30 is the minimum acceptable number for a quantitative analysis. Pero hanapan mo ng related literature. Okay. Nasa literature yan. 30 kasi, it uh, most likely reach normal distribution of your data. Kaya 30 is okay. Ito rin yung pinanggit ko kanina sa group 1. No? 30 is okay. Sige. So, do sa 30, guys, no? um, you have to identify yung... Kasi gagamit kayo na ANOVA or chi-square. Kaya mag-slovens pa rin kayo para makita nyo. Para makita natin lang yung percent error ninyo. Okay? Tapos yung percent error gagamitin nyo doon sa tabular value na kukunin nyo doon sa statistics book para malalaman nyo if you reject or accept. By the way, may I ask the team, how do you, um, ang sagot ninyo ay reject ba? There is, there is no, what is your null hypothesis? Uh, ano po, uh, no. Uh, there is no significant relationship between okay. students' academic progress. Okay. There, is, there is no significant relationship between video game activities and academic performance. So may I know how you rejected 
the hypothesis without doing chi-square and without doing analysis of variance. Group 4, please unmute your mic po and answer the question. Hello po. Huwag kayong kabahan. <laughs> Magpatapos na po tayo. <laughs> Sige po, pasagot na lang po ng question ni Doc. Sige, Alejandre, kaya mo yan. Direject nyo pa? Or not at all? Or, or hindi nyo na sinama? Is, not, not at all naman po. Hindi naman yung as in fully rejected po talaga. Okay, sige. So kasi, Andre, hindi nyo talaga siya mare-reject or ma-accept kasi walang tool, no? Okay? Pero if you follow yung ginawa ng group 1, uh, a choice between chi-square, depende kung anun that data, no? no? Uh, chi-square pede, Kasi nominal yung isa, nominal yung video game playing, number of hours, mo ganyan na tinabi nyo eh. What kind of video game they play. So pwede chi-square. Pag gumamit kayo nun, tas gagawin nyo yung computed versus tabular, tsaka pa lang kayo makakapag-reject or accept. So, uh, sa research, if we do not accept or reject a hypothesis, then do not write a hypothesis. But if you write a hypothesis, you are bound to reject or accept them because that will be your conclusion. Okay? So, magagawa nyo pa naman ng paraan yan. Okay? So, since relationship to, and there is a need for a hypothesis, therefore, do the necessary treatment of data or statistical analysis so that you have a decision whether rejecting or accepting. So at this point in time, guys, hindi nyo pa alam yung sagot to, Okay? You don't know if there is a significant relationship because that was never answered by your uh, treatment of data. Okay? So gagawin nyo yun. Pwede nyo magawa yun. Okay? Konting ano lang to. Konting computation na lang to. Alright? And then, um, may I know who, who does your research instrument? Um, yes po. Sino gumawa ng research instrument? Ako po, Miss Way po. Okay, so kayo yung gumawa. Alright, so nag-fit ka. Dapat yung research instrument mo, Andrew, uh, sagutin mo lang yung statement. Uh, research instrument meant for 1 and 2. Statement of the problem 1 and 2. Okay? Uh, alisin mo yung tanong na nakatulong ba to sa English? Alisin mo yun. Kasi ang sasagot nun is the number 3, yung chi-square nyo. Pag ni-reject niya, no? pag ni-reject niya, ah, di, ano, there is a significant difference. So, ibig sabihin, yes, nakatulong. Okay? Gets nyo, no? Hindi natin pwede tanungin kasi direct yun eh. Pero very, ano kasi, very uh, subjective yun. So, kailangan let the, the analysis Answer it for us. Okay? Sige. And, um, so I think, oh, so the conclusion pala, for the conclusion, answer directly the four statements. Magiging four lang siya kapag pinalitan natin yung title. Ginawa lang natin relationship or correlates of academic performance and video game. Okay? Pero kapag, uh, Sinamay enhancement, magiging apat yung problem. So, sagutin nyo yun. Papasok yung mga implications na binigay ni Andre kanina. Meron kasi siyang sinabi sa last statement, like Andre, no? Yung mga implications. How to enhance, no? So, yun yung magiging sagot mo dun sa number four. Kung merong significant difference. Alright? Pag Sige. So, so, I think that's all for for group number three. So please improve it kasi maganda yung topic. 
mag ano, madami tong ano ito yung mga gustong topic ngayon ng mga ano ng mga publishing ano publish mga conferences no okay thank you guys all right thank, thank you, you very bro. much doc thank you po the presentation has now concluded um, at this juncture, we would like to express our gratitude to our panel for this afternoon by giving an, a plaque of recognition to Dr. Ria Lisa Centeno Canlas for sharing her time and expertise as a panelist during the Aquinas School Research Congress with the theme Aquinas School, Sustaining the Spirit of Inquiry and Listening. Given this 22nd day of April in the year of our Lord, 2022, at Aquinas School, San Juan City signed Sister Maria Rosalinda F. Kalong OP, the Directress or and Principal of Aquinas School. I believe that this certificate will be sent on your address through the school um, doc. So thank you very much po sa pag share ng inyong expertise uh, to my students especially because I believe that further they will further improve their um, research papers accordingly. Thank you po. Okay, so yeah, and with this one, let's have our closing remarks to be given to us by David Matthew Agias, a researcher. Um, so for our closing remarks, I would like to thank and congratulate everyone who spoke and performed today. I would like to thank uh, our panelists, Dr. Ria Liza Canlas, for taking time out of their busy personal and professional schedules and listen to our research presentations. Lastly, for Ms. Susie Alabado for making us achieve this hurdle in life and making this research congress possible. And for everyone here, thank you and have a good day. Thank you very much. And also congratulations to our researchers. Thank you. Uh, con yes, congratulations to everyone. So to end, you made it. <laughs> yes, totoo po yan, Doc. <laughs> Mahaba-habang paghihirap ang pinagdaanan ng mga ito. So to end our um, Congress, let's have our closing prayer by Cedric Cal Victoriano. Cedric Kyle, are you still there? Hello. Uh, Miss Wala po ata dito si Lita. Ah, okay. Well, may I have um a volunteer to have the closing prayer instead? Thank you very much, Charles. Go ahead po. Well, let us put ourselves in the Holy Presence of Lord. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We give you things, O Lord for all the benefits and blessings we have received during this hour of learning. May the Spirit of God through the intercession of Mother Mary, the Mother of our Lord and the Angelic Doctor, St. Thomas Aquinas, be always, be always with us. Amen. Mary, Queen of the, of the Most Holy Rosary, pray, pray for, for us. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. Pray for us. Saint Dominic de Guzman, pray for us. Yes. And the Father is under there you go. That ends our research congress. I hope you guys enjoyed and you had a great time, especially to our panel, Dr. Ria Lisa Canlas. Thank you very much, Po, and to our dear faculty members who are here with us this afternoon. Um, also to the students of Dominican College of San Juan who joined and um, watched our um, Aquinas School students in their research presentation. Thank you, Po. Can I request Po to have a screenshot, a picture, Po? Please open your cams. Let me take a screenshot, Po. There you go. Okay, Po. I'm taking the screenshot in five, four, three, two, and one. There you go. Congratulations. For my students po in grade 12, I'm requesting them to um, stay and